A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow worshippers of Satan. Wrong channel. But if I think about it, most, most mathematicians probably aren't religious nowadays, apart from the Fuchs, so yeah, mathematicians are Satanists confirmed. Welcome back to another Satanic video. <laughs> Our Lord and Savior Satan, the founder of Negative 112. In the next two videos, I'm gonna be putting out smaller problems. Basically, they are very small, but they are still fun ones. You can try them out for yourself too. Why am I pushing those out? Because I'm gonna be out of house a bit with my class, taking a little trip at the end of the school year. And the first video we are gonna, or the first, the first problem we are gonna cover in the video is this Diophantine equation x plus xy plus y is equal to 55. Try it out for yourself. It's a fun little problem. If you're not familiar with Diophantine equations, we are gonna looking for integer solutions to x and y. But for this video, we are just gonna take a look at the natural number solutions. Find the negative integers for yourself to the solutions. It's not very problematic if you follow the steps in the video. Try it out for yourself and when you're done, keep watching the video for the solution. By the way, this video has been sponsored by the wonderful people over in Brian. So if you're interested in STEM content, Definitely make sure to check those out. More information at the end of the video. Now we're gonna dive right in. So there are several ways to solve a Diophantine equation. One way would be graphically, another one would be to treat this as a composition of a function, for example, and find the zeros of the intersection. Or my most favorite method is to do it algebraically. And that's what we are gonna do at first. And then I'm gonna present to you a second method, such that the video isn't too short, which is gonna be a very intuitive and cool method. So keep watching the video for this one. And now we are gonna dive right in. Now, how would you approach a problem like this in an algebraic matter? Well, if you take a look at this polynomial, you could say, um, in, in two variables, you are gonna notice that this looks an awful lot like kind of a binomial formula, just, just a tad bit, because there is a two missing here and also there are squares missing here. So it's not completely a binomial theorem, but it's gonna lead us in the right direction. Now what we are gonna do is we are gonna turn this into the multiplication of two linear factors. And here's where the ansatz begins. And it's gonna be a very intuitive thing once you have seen it. Once you have seen it, you can't unsee how you can factorize something like this. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna multiply x plus a times y plus b. Why are we gonna do this? We are gonna go away from the original problem a tiny little bit. Now, if you were to multiply something like this out, what you're gonna notice is we are gonna get a factor of x y, which we need. This is also why I didn't choose any coefficients in front of the x and y, because there are only ones in front of here. Now, also by multiplying out, okay, so, so we got the x y part. What we are also going to get is kind of the x part, but multiplied by a coefficient b, by a scalar b, and also the y part multiplied by a scalar a. And also some constant part, which we are gonna deal with just in a minute. So let us multiply everything out and see what we can recover from the original equation when doing this factorization here into linear factors. So what we are gonna get is x times b, so bx plus x times y, I'm gonna write it out in order, just like the original one, plus a times y, plus ab. This is the constant part I was talking about. Now, what we are just gonna do is, to recover our original one, is to compare coefficients. Now the xy part is already done, that is good. But what about the x part? Let us create a little system of equations, a very, a very trivial one, to be honest. Um, so what do we need in front of the x? We need a one, so b must be equal to one. And what do we need in front of the y? We need uh, also a one, that's the coefficient of y. So a is equal to one and b is equal to one. So if you plug those values in, what we are gonna get is x plus xy plus y plus a, B is one times one, which is one. And that is good, I would say. That is most definitely good because we have recovered our original polynomial, which is nothing other than 55. 
plus 1. So the successor of 55, so 56 in other words, is the same as x plus a, so x plus 1, times y plus 1. And this is very, very good. <laughs> this is very, very good. And I'll tell you why. So let us write everything out once again. So x plus 1 times y plus 1 is the same as 56. Now, we want to solve the Diophantine equation. So we want to see which natural number solutions or integer solutions we could get out. Try the negative solutions for yourself. We are just going to deal, as mentioned before, with the positive solutions. Now, 56 can be turned into its prime factorization. If we go the prime factorization route, this means that we can find all the combinations, how we can get 56 out when multiplying numbers together and two numbers at that because we have two linear factors. So let us do the prime factorization of 56 really quick. So 56 is even, so this is 2 times 28. 28 is even, so this is 2 times 14. So this is the same as 2 squared times 14. And 14 is even, meaning 2 to the third power times, four, uh, times 7 must be equal to the multiplication of those two factors. And now we can write out all the possible solutions to x plus 1 and y plus 1, and then we are done. <laughs> that is all we really need to do. So what we got is a few systems of equations, which is going to tell us everything about that. What about the first one? So x plus 1, and without loss of generality, the problem is symmetrical um, in x and y. We are just going to go the uh, half of solution route. Then you can just turn around the, the um, variables and get the other set of solutions out. So double the solutions. And you can do the same thing with the prime factorization for negative numbers, such that those two are negative, giving us a positive solution out. And then you are basically done. I think you get the drill by now. now x plus 1 could be, for example, 1. Meaning y plus 1 must be equal to um, what times 1 is 56? Well, obviously 56. So x plus 1 is equal to 1 and y plus 1 is equal to 56. So the first set of solutions is going to be x being equal to 0 and y being equal to 55. I think you get that, obviously. <laughs> if you plug the numbers in, it checks out. Now for the next one. x plus 1 is equal to, let us go one prime factor at a time. And the cool thing about this uh, route, going the prime factorization route each and every step, is it's going to just spit out every solution that we need. If x plus 1 is equal to 2, then y plus 1 must be equal to 28, obviously. This is what we got here. This is one of the solutions, meaning x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 27, for example. Now the next one, let us take a look at this. So x plus 1 is equal to 4, meaning x is equal to 3. And y plus 1 is equal to 14, meaning y is equal to 13. And the last one, and then we are already done. x plus 1 is equal to 2 to the third power, which is 8. So x is equal to 7 and y plus 1 is equal to 7, meaning y is equal to 6. And those are half the positive integer solutions, meaning there are 8 positive integer, integer sets of solutions that we got here, pairs of solutions. And also there are the negative ones, which is an exercise to the fewer. That is an interesting method, right? And it always works with simple Diophantine equations like those ones. But there is an even cooler way, which, which is very intuitive. And this is what we are going to check out next. Now, remember at the start of the video, what we did is we kind of turned this into a binomial formula. This was the main idea behind it, turning it into the multiplication of linear factors. But if you have an unregular polynomial, which doesn't factorize nicely, what you're usually going to do on the binomial formula is complete the square. And this is kind of the case here too. We got x and y and we got x times y. What is x times y if you think about it in a square for example or a rectangle? Well, x times y, if those are the side lengths of a rectangle, it's going to give you the area of a rectangle. So let us draw a little rectangle with 
the side length x and y. So the area is going to be x times y. Let us suppose that x and y are also areas, meaning dimensionally we could add those together, giving us a total area of something being 55. How can x be an area? Well, 1 times x is going to give us the area of a rectangle with side length 1 and also x. Let us glue this rectangle that we just talked about to the sketch. This is side length x and this is side length 1. Same logic goes with the y part. y is 1 times y, meaning it's a rectangle of side lengths 1 and y. Oh, this is not completing the square. But what we are doing here area-wise is we complete a rectangle. Is that a term that does already exist? I don't know about that. But the area that we are getting here is 55. This is what it means for x y plus x plus y to be added together. This whole area is 55. Now if we were to complete this rectangle, all we would need to do is add this little square right here. And what are the side lengths of the square? Well, 1 and 1. And this is where the real magic happens. And here it just simply pops up once again in a visual matter. Do you see it? The area of this whole new rectangle after completing it is going to be formula-wise y plus 1, which is the first side length, times x plus 1. And what are those two multiplied together as the total area? Well, the area of this shaded part is 55 plus 1 times 1 as the area, which is 1. So 55 plus 1, which is 56. Visually speaking, we get the same factorization out and this is just simply beautiful. Did you know about this method? Maybe not. This is really, really cool, completing the rectangle. This is something that someone should create a Wikipedia article about. But um, this is just outright gorgeous and I really love this approach and it brings you right to the last steps of the problem. And if you are also a sucker for visualizations, for solving problems by thinking outside the not box but rectangle, then the contents of today's sponsor Brain might be the perfect fit for you. Rarely a sponsor transition has been this smooth. That was really, really good. But do you know what is also smooth? The visualizations and the animations, the things you can play around with over on Brilliant. They work like a charm and they will help you understand things like mathematics, be it Diophantine equations, differential equations, learning about derivatives, integrals and so on. Or any other thing that you want to learn about in the STEM field, be it physics, computer sciences and so on. With their awesome visualizations that have been created by a team of experts in their field, you are going to be an expert too in a rather short amount of time. Now Brilliant isn't your regular old classroom that you sit in and wait for the teacher to be done writing something out on the blackboard. <laughs> I'm one speaking here. But it just is what it is. There is a new age of learning at the moment. It's not only on YouTube by watching audiovisual content. It's also sites like Brilliant who try their best at transferring the STEM knowledge, the combined STEM knowledge of our generation to your brain. And I am one who recommends Brilliant in many of my classes too, be it in mathematics or physics at my school. I know the website is in English and I'm working at a German school. But to be honest, visualizations, you don't need any language for those. They are universal. If I show someone this graphic right here, and they have a bit of common sense, they are going to understand what I did here and they don't need any kind of language for that. All they need are the numbers that we got here. And the same principle goes for Brian. If I show some proof out of the geometry section which is highly visualized, then my students in sixth grade are gonna understand that. 
And this is just outright beautiful. And I think many teachers can benefit from the amazing content. I even recommend it brilliant to some of my other colleagues, for example, our chemistry teacher, and she's using brilliant too in their classes. And it's just amazing. It's, it's, it's just a great network of people who just have a huge interest in STEM and learning. And if you want to be part of this huge network of people, then why not make sure to trial print for yourself. Get yourself a 30 day free trial by using my linky down there at the top of the description brain.org slash flamblemaths. With it, as mentioned before, you are going to get a 30 day free trial of awesomeness. Try out the whole landscape of brain for yourself and get used to what they offer to you. And if you think this could turn into a very, very lovely long time relationship, then make sure to actually make use of the link to get 20% of an annual premium subscription. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. And if you enjoyed today's video, I know it wasn't something very technical, but it was still a cool problem, which is going to make use of some tools that you might have learned before at school or maybe at university. And if you did enjoy what you have seen today, then make sure to subscribe to the channel, also subscribe to Flemmy's Wood and all the other things that I have um, going on. And up until the next video, I'm wishing you guys a flamboyant day. See ya!